so good. I love tea, especially in the morning, like a hot cup of English breakfast tea. Love that stuff. Everybody loves coffee, talks about coffee all the time. I can't get into coffee, love the smell, don't like the taste, but tea, that's my jam. So, okay, hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it, and I did a video a couple of weeks ago, I'll put a link up there about what I call an advanced exposure blend in Luminar, and that was effectively taking two different images from a set of brackets, uh, one lighter, one darker, and putting different parts together in order to kind of blend a, a better balanced light equation, if you will, in the photo. I'm gonna do something similar here today, except it's not two different uh, images from the bracket set, it's actually a long exposure and a regular exposure. Let me show you. So I have this shot that I took in the Cotswolds in England when I was there. And this was uh, an image from a set of brackets. I still fire brackets pretty much all the time, although I find myself I'm generally not editing uh, and building HDRs out of them. I'm either blending them together or I'm just using a single exposure. In case you're curious, that comes up sometimes. But um, in this case, I was taking a set of brackets here, but I'd also taken some long exposures. And I was just kind of looking at them and I thought, you know, I like some of the long exposure and then I like some of this image from the bracket set. So I'm gonna put them together because that's half the fun of photography is making stuff you wanna make. So I'm gonna say add new image layer and I'm gonna go get, there it is. That's the uh, one of the long exposures I took. Now here's the thing, um, on a tripod, uh, everything is exactly the same in terms of, um, you know, focal length and all that sort of stuff because you want it to line up. And uh, okay, so here's a long exposure. And here's how I uh, generally do this. And this is what I, I think of this in terms of like, you know, blending time or something. I'm not really sure what to call it, but it's effectively taking a short exposure and a long exposure and putting together the best parts. The best parts of the long exposure, as you can see, uh, primarily are the water. Let me turn that off. Um, off. Um, but I'm also gonna put in the sky and do a little work around the trees as well. I liked that the people here, uh, some of them like on the bench were still and some were moving and I captured that movement, purely accidental because I was firing a set of brackets. Um, but I just happened to get good movement there, which I like and I wanted to preserve that. On the long exposure, the people are really, I don't know how well you can see that because it's kind of dark, but the people are really blurred out and I don't think look very good but the water looks pretty solid, so I'm gonna go do that. So the first thing I do is I just reduce the opacity just because it, it gives me a little bit better visibility into how the layers are gonna to look together. Also, that top layer, which is the long exposure, is darker, so I wanted to brighten it. And all I do is I go grab the brush, and I'm just gonna increase the size of the brush, and I'm just gonna start painting in that water from the other image, and I'm just gonna paint it in here. Now you're gonna see it's darker and blah, blah, blah. So don't worry about that. We're gonna come around and make some further adjustments after we get our image blended. But this is a fun technique. It's very similar to what I did in that other video that I mentioned a moment ago, but uh, it's not quite the same because like I said here, you're kind of blending time. You're taking a short exposure and a long exposure, putting them together to get the best of both worlds. So there's the bottom. I think I like that. Now I'm gonna go and get the top. So I'm gonna come over here and do a little bit of this business and a little bit of that business and maybe some of that tree uh, and then come over here and get some of that tree as well. If you remember, some of that tree was darker in the other image, in the top image, uh, the long exposure, and I like the darker bit. So now that I've got them kind of blended, I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna start at 100 and I think at 100, it actually looks pretty good. Actually, that's not entirely true. I need to get this brush again and come in here and add a little bit more to that tree because uh, it was a little too bright. I think it's okay that it's bright around the edges because the sun would be coming in, but if it's really bright here but dark there, that's gonna, like how does the sunlight get to the back of the tree, Jim? So trying to correct that. To be clear, this is not gonna be perfect. I'm just showing you a technique Every photo is gonna be different and I recommend experimenting and taking your time. I'm just trying to compress a lesson, if you will, into a short you know, 10 or 12 minute video or whatever. So not always easy to do. However, what I have done and uh, I feel like succeeded in doing is taking the base image there and layering on top the stuff that I like from the other image. It's maybe a little too dark in that tree. Um, I'm actually gonna come back with the brush 
and let's see, maybe erase at a really low opacity, just to maybe lighten that a little bit. Uh, something like that, I don't know. Like I said, we're all friends here, I'm just kinda hacking around, and I recommend taking your time and doing it right, um, whatever right means. Okay, so now that I have that, the next thing I would do is go get a new adjustment layer and add a filter, and I'm gonna start with two filters, and in fact, I'm only gonna have these two filters on this layer. And here is about trying to balance the light. Um, if you've seen any of my videos, you've probably heard me talk before about light, detail, and color, and that's kind of how I think about uh, in terms of editing images. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna take highlights down, maybe add a tiny bit of clarity. Now again, this is a new layer on top of the other two, so this is affecting the entire blended image. Um, and so this is, this is impacting my final result because I'm applying this globally. I think I'd add a little bit of smart tone and maybe take highlights down here again. Again, all I'm trying to do is balance out the sky and the water and the trees and the light and all that stuff. So let me see here. There's before, there's after. I actually think it looks better and it's starting to look what I would call believable. Um, I'm probably gonna cool this off a tad, maybe give it a tad of tint. Um, I'm not doing much color work here. I'm gonna do that on my next layer as soon as I get another sip of my tea. God, that's good. Okay, another layer. Add new adjustment layer. I'm just gonna go get a preset, a look, whatever you wanna call it. Um, I'm gonna get Shaw, um, and that preset or look or whatever you wanna call it is from the Luminar Marketplace. I have a preset look, God, I call them presets. <laughs> looks, I have a looks pack in the Luminar Marketplace, and uh, this is from that. So it's called Shaw, and all I'm gonna do is add that, and then I'm gonna take the uh, opacity down because it's kind of a little too pink. At 100, like I love the color, but it's too much for this photo, and that's where opacity comes in. I'm just taking that down a little bit, trying to create a little bit of a sunset look, which I think I have. I think I'll add, let me see, I forgot what filters are on this. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go add like a uh, Image Radiance and Orton, and see if I can give a little bit of that romantic moodiness to the photo. It enhances shadow a little bit, adds a little bit of fun, um, something like that. Just a light touch. And then really the last thing I'm gonna do is get the eraser because this right here is like a duck that was swimming. So I got a blurred duck. Nobody wants a blurred duck. Like look at my photo of a blurry duck. Um, so I'm just gonna take that out as soon as the erase tool wakes up and gets ready for me to use it. Okay, uh, here we go. I'm gonna erase that. There's a couple little things here. I don't know how good of a job I'm gonna do. I think the eraser tool generally does a pretty good job in Luminar, but I do think you have to be careful and sometimes it requires me going um, back and forth or maybe using clone and stamp in addition to it. Uh, my hope is things improve as uh, like when Luminar 4 comes out uh, and that sort of thing. Um, like I said, it's pretty good. I think it's done a pretty good job here. Um, and let's see, I'm gonna get that last little bit. Yeah, I think that actually looks good. So the only thing I see is it's a little bit darker on this tree and a little bit lighter there. So I'm pointing out my own kind of failings. Um, I'm not gonna spend time correcting that right now. Uh, I would recommend dodge and burn. You know what, I am gonna do that because that's what you're here for. Let me get dodge and burn. And I'm just gonna t say start painting. And I'm gonna say, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna lighten at a really low strength. Um, so I'm just gonna lighten that tree a little bit. Um, and all I'm trying to do is balance that light. I think that looks better. There we go. So uh, I recommend doing stuff like that. When you're putting images together, you know, I'm looking at it now, I'm just getting picky. I'm not gonna do this. I'm really, really not gonna do this. But you know, you could maybe do the same thing with Dodge and Burn over here. All I recommend doing is taking your time balancing out the light. However, um, that's like a, you know, not a final step, but that's a step you need to accomplish to make sure you can kind of create a believable blended exposure, which I think I've done a pretty good job of here. Again, take your time, this isn't perfect, but I wanted to show you the technique, which is I had a basically a blown out photo from a uh, bracket set, but I liked a good bit of it, which was the section over there on the left bank with the people, and I liked some of the stuff on the right bank, and everything else I kinda liked better in the long exposure. So I stuck that long exposure on top, made a bunch of edits, and voila, here you go. There's a final blended exposure. This is kinda what I call blending time, 
basically taking uh, two images uh, taken at the exact same spot with the, effectively the same settings, you know, focal length, etc. But one's a long exposure and one's a short exposure and putting them together to get the best parts of each. That's how you do it in Luminar. It's actually really easy. Again, take your time. I'm trying to cram a bunch into a video here that's not too long so that you'll watch the whole thing. Um, but that's how you do it, my friends. Um, I think I might do something else, and that is, you're gonna hate me for this, but I might go get sun rays and put it in that lamp right there just to create a tiny little burst of sun because why not? It's fun. Um, hey, if you're making art, make the art you wanna make, right? So that's it, my friends. This was just a fun technique and a fun image. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. And more than anything, um, I hope you enjoyed my tea. No, I'm kidding. Um, I do appreciate you coming by and checking things out. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, hit me up down below. Subscribe, like, share, tell your friends, all that stuff. I appreciate it. I hope you're having a super awesome day. Thanks for watching. I'll see you real soon. Have a great day. Take care and adios.